dressed uh, Korean gentleman, as you may be able to tell by my accent, but let's go ahead and hop into our first game of the night. Uh, apparently we've already finished Picks and Bans, which is a little bit of a surprise to me, but uh, the uh, the Garen ban may be a little bit, um, I don't know, how does Garen win 1v1 Zcad? I'm not too uh, sure about that. I don't... I don't know why you'd ban Garen, but sure, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever works for you. Uh, I mean, honestly, the passive's pretty good. You can stay back if anything, but you won't be farming, and I, I'm i not sure how I actually feel about that. Uh, the picks with the little block in the Pantheon, though. The Pantheon pick by Reem, already she's looking to just bring out the, the quote-unquote cheese there, just try to get some really early game harass out. And there, there's literally nobody who can deal with the Spears level 1, unless you're a fully stacked armor like Garen or Malphite or something like that, but... LeBlanc, uh, unless he has some armor runes in there, I really don't think he's going to have a good time early. But if he brings it to like level 6, he should be able to crush the Pantheon, no problem. Yeah, exactly. And so Pantheon's block passive won't really be all that super effective versus LeBlanc. It'll block no. out a little bit of that lane harass, but you're still going to get exploded. And specifically with uh, no jungle pressure, this just being a straight up 1v1, uh, you don't have to worry about your distortion usage. Uh, it used to be like, similar with Zed's uh, you know, Living Shadow and Lissandra's Ice Path, once you used that skill aggressively, you just got ganked and died. But now you can feel free to distort all you want forward, and you're never going to be punished for it. Nope. Uh, what else is going to be good in this matchup? The, uh, the chain as well is going to be pretty nice. Being able to keep the Pantheon locked down. Even if he does jump on you, you know, you just chain to sort away and you're good to go. The, the the fact that the Pantheon has to jump into you makes hitting the chain like a hundred times easier. So as soon as as soon as the Pantheon jumps, you just drop the chain, you just store it away, wait for the chain to latch, and then you can go back in and just keep on harassing. Like it's gonna be a tough time for uh Rain, I gotta say. Yeah, and, you know, the Pantheon pick isn't necessarily terrible, but at the same time, it's, uh, it, versus an AP matchup, specifically one as strong as LeBlanc, it's gonna be a little bit rough. Now, keep in mind, this is jungle versus support matchup, and you can see their character cards on your screen right now. Maybe not a lot of experience with either one of these, uh, individual champions, but, I mean, uh, Pantheon, uh, has been played by a jungler, as a jungler, uh, and I don't think Reim's played it this season, but... You know, Pierre uh, has some experience on LeBlanc's support from way back in the day when that used to be, uh, you know, a support style that was actually developed in Korea. I was excited to see it then. I'm excited to see it now, but of course, it's in a little bit of a different situation here in the mid lane. Hey, man, I, I played support LeBlanc before. It was cool. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. But, uh, all right. I mean, he, he normally plays, you know, the Andy DeBrom, Russian and Lulu. So it's nothing too out of the ordinary. He's got some of those... Burst Mages for the supporting role with the Annie and the Lulu, so that's not too bad. Uh, if you do build a little bit more AP, either way. Uh, I, I didn't realize that Raven was actually the jungler, so picking up Pantheon's not too bad. Um, should be pretty familiar from it, like at least solo queue experience. <sighs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of what possible route she could go to try to mitigate some of the harass she'd be taking now. Maybe, I don't think Doran's Shield is too bad here, actually. I think Doran's Shield wouldn't be too bad. If she went like Null Magic Mantle and Potions? Nah. <laughs> but we'll just have to wait to see where till we're actually in the game. Yeah, exactly. And we should be loading into that game here in just a second, so don't go anywhere. And uh, you know, to to start things off, I do have to uh, you know give some some brief stats before we hop into this. We've got uh, you know Raim with uh, not a lot of uh, not a lot of stats behind her name, but with Pure having put up some decent stats in the support role. You know, his CS per minute maybe not something that's incredibly indicative of his skill, given that he's a sport. But let's go ahead and get into our first game of the day. It's going to be Rain versus Pierre. Alright, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament featuring all of your favorite players. My name is Rapid, with me is Egad, and we're getting out onto the rift for our first best of three of the night as Pure 
taking on Rain. Of course, pure uh, support for Najin this season. And uh, while it may say I am down there on the bottom part of your screen, this is actually uh, Rain from I am's female team, I am Athena. So Pantheon versus LeBlanc. Uh, a lot of um, a, a lot, a lot of uh, people voting very highly yeah, for pure in this good. matchup. But we'll see if Rain can pull something out. I mean, I, I just, I'm not sure. There's no stats for me to look at for, uh, exactly. for her. It's, it's a mystery. You don't know what to expect. I mean, I'm just expecting a lot of spears being thrown out there, honestly. <laughs> but I, we couldn't see the, the runes or masteries or anything like that. If she had a little bit more points in uh, some mana regen, some glyphs as well for some mana regen, mm -hmm. could making spam the spears out a little bit easier. I, I'm looking as close as I can to this, to this stream to try to see if there's extra armor for uh, pure. And they haven't clicked on them yet. I just, I just need to see it. Come on, just click here, man. Yeah, the, uh, the biggest difference uh, for me comes in the amount of sustain. There's 300 hit points in potions there uh, on, on pure. And Raim, you were talking about maybe putting some uh, mana regen in your glyphs, but uh, most Pantheon builds that I've seen start with a Crystalline Flask. So you can get not only a lot of mana back, but uh, the Crystalline Flask and then three health potions or two health potions, one mana afterwards. Are, are just going to give you so much sustain and lane that it almost outdoes the amount of damage. And certainly the Doran's Blade start here is going to give you lifesteal, but I don't think there's any way you'll be able to get that much HP back. Going in, there's level 2 for both of them, and you can just see how heavily Rain out trades there, but I'm not sure this is going to last very much longer. There's an Ignite put down. Rain running back towards her turret. And I think at this point, Pure knows that he's got the matchup one. Well, apparently I'm like... Three to five seconds behind you, so. All right. Well, refreshing probably. Uh, I did. I tried. You know. All right. It's, well, it's just uh, doing this for me. <laughs> we'll see if we can sync things up here. I may have to, uh, you know, go for a little bit of sync up action. But for the meantime, I guess I'll be able to uh, to cover the play by play, and we'll see if we can get things. I mean, after that exchange, Raim just got destroyed. There's no ignite now for uh, the setup here, but he can TP back to lane if anything goes like horrifically wrong. So we'll see. I mean, Rain still has the factor that she has Flash as well as Ignite. So one more all-in could could be what actually wins it a lane. And also, she's got to be careful that she doesn't get dove here. This is a huge wave. Pure still a decent amount of health and could just distort away, if anything. Hmm. Yeah, at this point, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can go back in. There's no health. There's no mana. And there is the kill. Game number one going over to pure just had to wait it out he pretty much had the game one from his first all in but here we're gonna get a chance to see it one more time with the chain latching underneath the turret especially it was just too much damage no sustain no resources and even though there was somewhat of a feigned all in afterwards first blood and game number one will go to pure i'm not sure why she actually jumped in there that was a bit of a blunder to me uh i think at that point she was already so far behind she just had shouldn't have tp yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right you're right yeah, and it was a, notably a departure away from taking teleport as uh, mid laners, recognizing the 1v1s, unless you're going to go for that early level 2, level 3 all in, are going to be won by the person who's able to get back to lane with the better buy, um, you know, using teleport. Of course, if you are if you have to walk all the way back to the lane, unless you're like, you know, Nidalean, you can hop your way back, or Riven, you can get back in the lane using mobility. Um, it, it's gonna make it a little bit rougher. So Pantheon doesn't work out for Raymond. Now it's only one game left to try to bring herself back in the matchup. Um, maybe we'll see her actually go for an AP this time. Uh, I believe Caitlyn was banned out. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the bans, but uh, Garen, not, not sure why the hell that was banned. <laughs> maybe just pure having some fun or just banned away something random. Uh, I, I think in any one versus one matchup, you kind of want to always go for some kind of ranged. But I, 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 think I don't know why Panth. Option the uh, the Garen ban. It could have been pure. Actually, just saying. Look, I'm gonna pick a champion because I'm first pick. That means that she gets the opportunity to. Uh, I, I guess kind of counter pick, but at the same time, you know, Garen can be a uh, counter pick in some situations. I I don't know. It's a mystery behind that. But either way, I don't feel like that impacted the results of game number one overall all that much. Uh, still a very superior playstyle there, and it just early itemization I feel like was really, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, factors in there. If you had seen maybe, uh, you know, some heavy magic resistance, maybe even specking in beyond just glyphs uh, there for Raim, and uh, maybe going for a little bit more sustain, I don't know, could have been a good way uh, to win things out, but Pure will take game number one, and 
That takes us in here to, uh, to game number two. Should be loading into that in just a second. Getting into champion select. And last time we didn't get to see the champion selection in picks and bans. So hopefully this time we get a little bit more insight. What time are you at on the stream? I'm at, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right now. I'm at 1720. All right, uh, I'm at uh, 25, 23, but that's because I started it at a slightly different time. So I think we're actually gonna go over a quick, um, quick replay of that last all-in from game number one, just so that we can see it one more time. Uh, I think it's probably uh, uh, about as, uh, uh, about as you know, straightforward as possible. Straightforward. That's a great <laughs> word for it. Yeah, it's nothing too out of the ordinary, quite honestly. So, yeah, she just jumps in, and then he's like, Oh, you're extended. Here's a nice little single, and I'm just going to distort on top of you, and you're dead. <laughs> All right, we'll sync things up once we get a uh, solid clock on the screen and make sure that everything is uh, going the right way. But You can uh, see on the stream, actually. It's kind of a nice little timer right there next to the live button. Oh, uh, well, that's actually dependent on when you start the stream, like when you load it from the beginning, uh, not from the actual beginning. So. Interesting. Yeah, mysteries of the universe. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll do our best to uh, sync things up. But right now, we're just kind of chatting about uh, the players. Of course, this is game number two coming your way, and uh, unfortunately, bans are already done. But we'll see what uh, Pure actually goes ahead and picks here. He's up one game, and this time, completely different set of bans. You can see a little bit more serious here. No Rek'Sai, since that was one of Reim's most played champions in uh, the uh, LOL Ladies League. And uh, you can see the bans for Reim <laughs> include that LeBlanc that Pure played to such great effectiveness in game number one. I mean, this time she picked up a coin, so... Much better, I guess. You know, you have the ability to blind, you have the dive in and slow, and you bounce off them. Some interesting mechanics could be had from that. Uh, the reveal isn't that good, but the, the Valor form is actually pretty good in a one versus one scenario, too, because that extra bit of burst is pretty good at securing kills. So we'll exactly, see. and oh, okay, it looks like we're going to have uh, to load things back in in just a second, but uh, at least for the time being, from what I've been seeing, uh, you know, Quinn has a lot more 1v1 potential than I think Pantheon would. Uh, the difference, of course, being, ooh, is Pure actually going to pick a Graves here? He goes for the 80 carry versus, I guess, semi-80 carry 1v1. That's actually going to be pretty exciting. Hmm, Graves versus Quinn? You'd have to, I actually... I'm trying to think back to like the, the AD carry bot days like Quinn never ever saw play but when she did there were some matchups that she could actually win pretty well and Graves I don't believe is one of them because Buckshot no. and its collateral damage was always just a huge factor. Yeah, and the blind, especially from uh, from Quinn, it's mostly to counter out very auto attack centric champions. Uh, so if you had something like an Irelia, the blind would be very effective there uh, because she has no real way of dealing damage to you other than you know blade surge, but that's just the one of. For for Graves though, he's still able to deal buckshot and collateral damage, like you mentioned when he hits level six, and uh, the blind is not going to help you that. Uh, no amount of like maneuverability or like vaulting sideways, you're you're, you're gonna get hit by the damage and see if uh, see if she can stand up to that. I, I always love 1v1s for 80 carries because it means that you know every single little tiny auto attack, every single trade actually matters a lot. So it's gonna be exciting to see what these guys come out with uh, and of course girls respectively. Uh, Rain representing I am Athena. That's gonna be awesome to see uh, game number two because Pure wins this one then he will advance 2-0 to the next round. Uh, I believe he'll uh, in that next round he'll face the winner of Pilot and Goon. Yep, and uh, we have some stats for that as well. Uh, what do we got here, Pilot and Goong? They're actually pretty close, honestly, in terms of stats. But we'll do that once that game is there. So for now, we see if Pure can go 2-0 or if uh, Incredible Miracle can have a bit of a miracle. I mean, Reem, uh, there, there's always a lot that the female players have to... Why, why do I feel like Incredible Miracle are always put into the position where their name is like like very appropriate yeah it's just always appropriate <laughs> yeah kind of at the bottom of the standings at uh, lck at least so far this season uh champions have not been very kind to them and of course they still have yet to define themselves you know quite as uh dominantly as champions in that matchup maybe uh you know i am athena can put one on the board we're gonna check out the, if anybody uh, could it would be them <laughs> yeah we're gonna check out some rune pages on the stream right now and of course once again We'll be syncing things up as soon as we load into game, but for now, uh, you can see Raym is running uh, some pretty decent. Uh, actually, I want to say those are. I think that's armor, or is that uh, the, the 24? Okay, so we have nine armor, 
And then we have uh, plus 15 attack damage with some additional stats in there as well. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly uh, what's going on as far as rune pages. Though for masteries, it looks pretty, uh, pretty similar. Uh, big difference being no points put into Warlords. So that's actually really surprising when you're going for an attack damage based build. Not to put at least one point for that 2% extra damage from Warlord. That doesn't really make much of a difference. 2% isn't that much. Uh, I, I kind of like it. It's, it's because of how much she can spam out vaults and uh, when she shoots out Valor, I forget what the ability is called, but uh, that, that's not too bad. I, I like this kind of build. Now, for it's a very, very different build for Pure. He's gone for 14% attack speed, and then it switched things up. Uh, and of course, if you look at the, ma at the masteries, it's exactly the same, so no changes there. Uh, still four points in extra attack speed. No points in Warlord either, and that's actually even more surprising for Graves, where you want every single little bit of attack damage as possible, uh, just because he is a little bit more of a caster-based AD carry. Interesting. They, they're running the same masteries too, so. Huh. It's great minds think alike. I like um, it. It's cool. It's gonna be pretty aggressive. I mean, they'll be they'll be farming up for a while. I know I'm gonna be changing my masteries up a little bit afterwards. I always thought Warlord was great, but when you don't take it in these one v ones, maybe not the greatest uh, uh, the greatest spell. Of course, uh, both eighty carries uh, taking both spell weaving and blade weaving in masteries. So I'm excited to see if uh, you know maybe that's the new uh, kind of the new way of uh, the new way of going. So. Uh, looks like uh, we should be loading into game number uh, two here in this best of three series momentarily. Of course, Rame versus Pure. We'll get into that game here in just a second. In just a second. I keep misreading the emphatic hand gestures here. It was worse yesterday, uh, but uh, hopefully we can get the hang of things uh, for, uh, for game two. Number two, and of course, for any of the subsequent games, I think we'll have a total of six best of threes coming your way here tonight. Let's get it underway. <laughs> One day. One day. I, I mean, it's so hard to tell. Okay, so I am uh, going to pause things at uh, about 35 seconds into the stream. So if you go ahead and sync things up, uh, EGAD, we'll uh, go ahead and see where we are at. 35 seconds into the stream? No, into the game. The game, okay, let me see here. Uh, three more seconds. Well, I actually and... just skipped me forward to 53, so... Uh, oh. It's like uh, there's going to be a small discrepancy, of course. Give us a brief moment to go ahead and you know fix some of the sync issues, and we should be able to get everything back where it's supposed to be here in just a second. Are you at 53? Yeah. And I am at 53 right now. All right, well, hopefully it's not going to jump me forward. I have unpaused. It did that because their game, their, the stream actually lagged there. Okay, well, unfortunately, yeah. it's going to put me forward. I am at uh, about 120 right now, and so should still be a little bit ahead for some reason. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, yeah, it's because it's because their stream is lagging. That's why. Okay, well, a little bit of an unfortunate situation to start things out with. Oh, first blood there for Raim. Uh, we'll actually use up over almost half of her mana pool just on a couple of a uh, couple of birds. So we'll see if the bird is in fact the word here for I am Athena, representing of course versus Pure and uh, Najin this season. So uh, he's already going to start auto attacking the creeps and auto attacking the creeps and shoving the wave is going to be a very very strong strategy early on because uh, it says look I'm not going to play versus your enemy champion I'm just going to force you to hit those creeps and get the pushing advantage for that early level two. Hmm. Okay so the the one thing I didn't talk about really is the the expensive costs of the spell at least for 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 Valor. It's just it's so it's so hard to just keep it spammed out and also the passive for Quinn isn't too bad. Uh, getting that true damage is always nice if he does lock on to Graves, but it's not it's not all too often that'll happen. Yeah, Blinding Assault, uh, where Quinn shoots out bl Valor for a blind, uh, is only 50 mana at its uh, rank number one, but considering the base mana pool is only about 250 mana, you're using up 
almost a fifth of your mana every time you use that spell. So you get five birds and that's it. So we'll have to see if the mana costs become an issue uh, here for Raim, who has already been losing some CS under turret, and specifically in 80 carry versus 80 carry matchups where uh, you're almost always playing for CS, that becomes very important as the game draws on. Yeah, the the more Doran's Blades you have in this matchup is going to be for the better. And I, I don't think either of them is going to be able to pick up anything too big. Maybe a pickaxe here or there, but uh, even then, just Doran's Blade stacking is probably the best for these 1v1 scenarios. Because the game isn't going to last that long to get like a BF sword or, or a blood thirst or anything like that crazy. Ooh, Ray missing a lot of CS under the turret. An entire wave of minions behind at this point. Uh, you're gonna see some double Harrier passive usage there by Raim, so getting a little bit of extra damage down, but forced to blow her health potion a, uh, before uh, Pure in this matchup uh, is really gonna set her down uh, in uh, sustainability and lane. Not to mention the CS differential that's already starting to develop. Yeah, it's it's pretty big right now. Eight eight creeps, that's about a whole wave, and then two from another just completely oh, gone. going in. Look at that Harrier passive. That actually makes a pretty decent difference. However, that's mostly just because Raim has already used her health potion, and now uh, it's actually Pure's turn to get that 150 HP back over, of course, 10 seconds. Mm. I mean, she's, she's trying. She's actually exchanging really well, too, getting that double, like you said. It's just popping up my screen. I'm really far behind, apparently. But, uh... I gotta say that the mechanics are not too bad. Uh, Raim definitely playing much better than the last game. The Pantheon matchup versus LeBlanc wasn't wasn't the best, in my uh, opinion. All right, well, I'll go ahead and do a, a quick refresh here, possibly in uh, in between uh, this game and the next, and we'll try to get the sync issues uh, I determined. But uh, at least for the time being, Raim out of mana, out of health, and uh, even with a summoner heal, it's just not going to be enough. That'll be a 2-0 pure. Dashing in with a quick draw for a quick 2-0. I think we're going to need a quick instant replay. Coming your way here in just a second. Health, mana, they're uh, very, very low for Raymond at this point. Even after missing that, there's not too much of a uh, of a risk for pure. Dashing in, heal under ignite, not uh, not very effective. And pure, if she had pre prop the heal, I think she would have been okay to at least get out of that, but she didn't, unfortunately. Yep, and uh, with just 200 HP left over after that all in, pure will be your victor. Not only it's in game number two, but in our first series of the night. Taking a 2-0 victory over Rain. Let's see what else we got coming after this. It's going to be Lil Bunny, another I Am Athena taking.